Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to today's Caffeine for the Soul. And today's topic is loving disruption, and it's at the heart of great coaching, and it's at the heart of really supporting and impacting anyone in your world that you want to be able to truly support and impact. And it's taken from a live event I did last year where I was I was speaking about this with a group of coaches, and, and full disclosure, adult language will follow. I wanted to share a way of thinking about what we do as coaches, and it's something that actually both Ajit and Lisa spoke to a little bit yesterday. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write it this way. I'm going to say that coaching is the art and science of loving disruption. Now, there are two parts to that phrase. Loving and disruption. And most coaches that I meet are good at one of them. So most coaches that I meet are either, you can feel their care, right? You can feel yourself held in their love. You can feel that. And if you haven't had that experience, that's beautiful up to a point. And then once whatever it is in us that needs to know that we are loved, knows that it is loved, now what? So the problem with just loving them is it will only get them so far forward. I'm not saying it's not important. It's hugely important, but only up to a point. Otherwise, it becomes what they call in, in Zen grandmother compassion. Right? Grandmother compassion is just the unconditional embrace of a grandmother. You can do no wrong. Whatever you do, it's okay. And it is. But the other half of compassion is warrior compassion that knows that sometimes you have to cut off someone's arm to save them if the arm is infected. And that's the disruption part. Now, some coaches are really good at disruption. And I think the reason some coaches are really good at disruption is they're assholes. And they finally found a profession that allows them to exploit that for their own benefit. It is actually genuinely useful to be willing to do that. But by itself, it, it, it can only go so far because people will only take so much of it before they start pushing back. Right? Part of great coaching, part of extraordinary coaching, something that is missing in good coaching, is a willingness to poke the bear. But here's the thing. You're poking a fucking bear. <laughs> so you better be prepared for what's going to come back at you. And a lot of us aren't. We're scared of the bear. Now, being scared of the bear is different to being aware of a bear. Right? Really good to be aware of a bear. You don't have to be scared of it. Fear is the most overrated survival mechanism we've got. Right? Now, at a fundamental level, if there is a clear and present danger, fear is awesome. Right? Shoots the adrenaline into the system, takes, takes all the brain functioning out of the front, thinking about, well, should I run, should I not run? How big is the bear? How am I in comparison to the bear? I, uh, let me Google the average speed of a bear compared to the average speed of me. Right? You, know, you don't want that bit of your brain on. Right? So that kind of clear and present danger fear is fantastic. Makes you into super person and you can do amazing things. But the problem is there are very few bears in the world or at least in Marina del Rey. <laughs> so that same function has no value to us in these kinds of contexts. It has no value in making a presentation in a boardroom. It has no value in planning a talk. It has no value in deciding whether or not to write a book. Right? Now, here's the thing about fear. When you are a little kid and you do not have cognitive functioning, fear is a great way for adults to keep kids safe. Right? There are two natural fears, according to all the research I've seen. Right? Loud noises and falling. Right? So here's the thing. You get a little kid who's about to run into traffic, you make a really loud noise. Stop! And the kid stops, because it triggers the natural fear response, and he makes an association between running out into the street, and that response, and until he's about three years old or she's about three years old, that's great. 
But somewhere around three to seven years old, you don't run into the street because you don't want to die because you understand that's how it works. Fear is a really poor substitute for understanding because it blocks that same cognitive functioning that allows you to know what's safe and what isn't. So to be able to disrupt, to be willing to disrupt, not just for the sake of it, not just because you kind of get off on watching people squirm, but because sometimes people need to be disrupted to see something new. Now, while I talked about loving disruption in that snippet as something that coaches need to learn to do and, and develop their skill at, it, it's relevant for all of us if we want to grow. There are going to need to be two things present most of the time if we really want to transform, if we really want to change. And one is the feeling of safety that love engenders. And that's something that we can obviously get from a great coach, but it's also something that we can give to ourselves. It's a way we can hold ourselves. It's a a degree of care and spaciousness we can allow ourselves. And then disruption, a willingness to put ourselves into contexts where we are not completely comfortable, to look in directions where we maybe are a little bit afraid of what we might see, to be open to things being different than the way that we think they are. And it really, the two work together. The more held we feel, the safer we feel, the more willing we are to risk disrupting ourselves, to risk disrupting our point of view, to risk disrupting our personal reality. And that's the simple formula. The, the safer you feel, the more you will be willing to be disrupted. The more you are willing to be disrupted, the faster and more profoundly you'll learn, grow, and change. Have fun, learn heaps, and I'll talk to you soon.